Hi everyone. Yesterday we looked at tables and how to structure our data in Lua. Today we're going to delve further into that and get into some advanced topics. Welcome back everybody, thank you for joining us today. Uh, yesterday we went into uh, a brief introduction into Lua tables. So Lua tables, just to recap, are a really neat way of being able to take several different variables relating to one particular thing, I don't know, maybe a player for instance, and being able to put them together in a structure uh, to be able to aggregate all that information together in some form of object so that we can hand around and we can know that is always managed and, and is together. Uh, I'll add a link into the description for that video if you haven't quite seen it, head over to there first before coming here. But do make sure you come back because right now we're going to look at the way in which we can start manipulating that data in our table to make it a little bit more dynamic um, and uh, be able to get some different functionality, functionality out of it. So really yesterday we started looking at tables and the way in which we can have these what we call key value pairs within a table. Uh, let's briefly have a look at that just to recap. So in essence what we can have is a, a local variable, uh, let's call it table, uh, or maybe not table, uh, let's call it my table, um, and let's um, allocate the empty table uh, for the moment. So the empty table, um, it, as we already know, is some open braces. This is a table constructor, uh, just to be able to define our data goes within this particular space. So here I could simply say um, uh, my var equals some string value. Um, and right there, what we've got is a key value pair within our table. So our key in this case is my var, and our value is string value. So therefore, a little later in our script, I can go ahead and I can use what we called yesterday our dot notation. Dot notation is quite simply just a full stop that we place after the table name. That then allows us to access the members upon it. So that's really critical. And Really what we're doing here is we're enabling ourselves to access um, a, a value through its key, hence the name key value pair. But that's not the only way that we can access data or store data within tables. Um, let's have a look at how we can store what we would potentially call a list. So we have a, a new local variable called list, uh, and this time I, I just want to have a, an empty table constructor um, to kick off. But let's say we want the values A, uh, B, and, um, and C. So there we, we've, we've simply got now no key value pairs, but just straight values. So a lot of places, uh, a lot of languages will call this an array. Uh, and that's just because we've got a list of items that we can reference by what's called their index. So instead of using a key to reference them, we're using an index, which is basically an automatically generated key, really. Let's take a look at that. So we've got list here, it comes out in uh, script assist within the Lua script editor. Um, but instead of using dot notation, what we're gonna use is this um, what we call the subscript operator. So the subscript operator is a square bracket. So the square bracket then knows, right, I'm gonna look for the particular index of this item that's been allocated like an array. Script Assist already shows us that we've got three items in our list. They all start from one. It's an interesting point to note, if you're coming from another language other than Lua, a vast amount of these languages are what we call zero index. So therefore, if you have four items in your list. The greatest index that you have is three. It might be worth drawing this out very, very briefly. It almost works like the difference between the American uh, way of referencing floors in a building and the English way of doing floors in a building. So if you have a look at the, the floors in a building, they see these are our floors, obviously. Um, I've never had a career in art, you can see why. Um, but in the uh, zero indexed way of working, uh, you would start at zero, and that would be the first item. Uh, and then from that point, you would then have one and two. And in that case, you would have an array or a list of three items. But that is not the way in which it works in, um, in Lua. So Lua is, uh, and I'll redo this because I know you all love my art. Um, 
Zero, um, Lua is one indexed. So if I then draw my floors out again, instead of starting at zero, uh, as, uh, as you would do um, in the UK, if you're referring to floors, you'd have the ground floor, then the first floor would be uh, the floor above that. Um, in America, you'll have um, your floors being one indexed. So your ground floor is actually the first floor. The floor above that, the floor that's actually not at the entry point in America, will be classed as the second floor. So that's exactly how we work here. So that's one, two, and three. And I think I organized my floors a different way, but I think you understand the point. Um, so um, in essence, what we have here um, in Lua Script is um, the script assist um, element of Lua Scripts has already identified exactly what indices we already have available. So in this case, we can just select one, uh, and that's going to go and get the value A, uh, a 2B and 3C, respectively. So again, that's a really neat way of being able to store a list of things instead of just having variable A, variable B, variable C in three different variables. You can have them in the one and treat that as a list. So now knowing that we've got the difference between all of these uh, were the two ways of using a table, one being key value, or sometimes you call that a map, and the other one being a list, also known as an array, uh, we can then start to mix and match this in our table to be able to store some really uh, complex uh, data structures that relate to um, some players, for instance. So yesterday we talked about the, um, uh, the ability to store uh, a player name and a player ID uh, within a table. And I did allude to the fact that you know that was just for one player. Um, we'll uh, start to look at how we can use tables to ref reference many different players. Let's look at that now. So if I then have a local variable called player list, and again, I'll assign the empty uh, table constructor for the moment. Um, what we can start to do is use a list of tables. Each table within the list, within the player list, would represent a player. Therefore, that makes the name player list for our variable a really good name. Uh, I'm always quite an advocate, by the way, of um, well-defined, well-named variables. And as we do more talks on programming concepts uh, and the like, then uh, you'll, you'll probably see why. So let's start with another table at this point. So it's an empty table, so therefore the player list has a, an empty table within it. Uh, that represents a player, but let's start putting some data in. So we'll have um, name, and we'll call that Danny. Um, and then we'll have another one for ID. Uh, we'll give that a number, uh, and that's one. And then from this point, we can then start to add more players. So we'll just straight copy that, and then paste that down there. And this time, instead of Danny, we'll say um, Bob. Uh, because Bob's a good name, um, and uh, Bob has an ID of two. So therefore, what we've got is a list of two players. One named Bob, uh, Bob <laughs> one named Danny, uh, and uh, they have uh, the IDs one and two, respectively. So then, how would we access that? Well, Lewis Script and Script Assist is really going to help us out with the visibility of this, which, uh, just to mention again, Lewis Script is coming for a public beta on lewisscript.dev, so head over there, subscribe to the channel uh, for information on when that happens. But for the moment, let's see how it works out. So we have our variable playlist, and Script Assist is able to pick that out. Um, and in this case, we know it's a list, so therefore I'm going to use the subscript operator. And it says, yep, you've got indices 1 and 2. Which one do you want? So I'm going to select 1. Uh, and when I use dot notation on that, and it's actually, uh, uh, if you're new to programming, that's a confusing thing there, right there. Because the subscript operator, indice 1, is going to collect the table of the first player. So at that point, we then have a, play, uh, a table. This is also called an R value reference, which I'll probably come on to in an advanced video as well. But for the moment, just imagine we have our list and we've referenced the first table in the list. So therefore, we have that table in memory now. And therefore, I can then use the dot notation on that table to access its variables or its members. At that point, I then have ID and name. So let's just select ID uh, and let's um, refer to that as um, 110, for instance. So I've now been able to take that structure as a whole and make an amendment to it by assigning the value of 110 into my ID. So um, 
really, as you go along, you can then build in more complicated ways of, um, of storing your data. Um, and as you do so, the Lua script compiler is able to understand each element within it. So I'll give you an example of uh, what that would really be. Um, let's say Bob has an additional member. Uh, that member could be um, super customer. Uh, so therefore, or super player, so therefore, I don't know, uh, this player has been in touch with us and told us that they're amazing and we want to make a note of that. So let's have a new um, member called super player uh, and let's define that as true. So it's important to note that the Danny player doesn't have this member. Um, it could just be implicitly um, false in this case because it doesn't exist, but that's probably a detail that we can discuss uh, in, a, in a later video. But for the moment, we've got Danny and Bob, and, and Bob has this super player ability. So let's have a look at how Script Assist is going to handle this. So we've got our player list, and in this case, we'll select one again just to see how this works for the Danny player. So we'll select one, uh, and when we use dot notation on that table, we then get the entries ID and name. So we kind of expected that because that was what we already had before, but now let's have a look at the second in the index because that's our Bob player. When we use the dot notation, of course, Script Assist already knows from the back end compiler. It's been able to read that script. It understands the fact that it has this additional member and it presents that um, as an entry. So from that point, I can select Super Player and we can just say, that's no longer true, that's false. So really, uh, that's a run through uh, both of how Lua Script is able to handle tables and complicated tables going forwards, um, and also gives an, a, an overview of how you can use tables as both lists in terms of just throwing in some values and then referencing them by almost like by the floor number or what we call the index, uh, and also what we went into detail uh, to do with yesterday to do with the key value pairs and being able to describe a table that has a member with a name, or for instance, name, and then a value of some value like Danny. Um, what a great name that is. So um, that's it from me today, really. Uh, other than to note, as we always do, if you're into financial market trading and you want to put all your Lua skills to good use, and code up our algo, turn your trading plan into an algorithm, head over to script.trading for more information on that, and I'll see you soon.